I am uh, giving this talk for my former colleague, Tony Chueri, who had personal reasons why he was unable to make it to this meeting. And since I was going to be here anyway, I perhaps foolishly agreed to give this talk for him. And now I'm hoping I can do his slides justice. So what are signal, single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs? This, um, they represent single changes in the nucleotides in proteins that perhaps subtly change their function. And this is perhaps dramatically different than what you would see in the somatic tumor cells where there are multiple mutations and probably drowned out any polymorphism in a individual protein that is likely still there relative to the germline. So a lot of uh, germ -y, germline, uh, germ -y, germline wide association studies have um, been able to, looking at thousands of samples, identify SNPs that are associated with development of diseases. But Tony wanted to know whether SNPs could also be associated with outcome of cancers. And he was driven to do this by some data in prostate cancer in breast cancer, nasopharyngeal cancer, that suggested that some SNPs might be associated with outcome. For example, in prostate cancer, multiple SNPs in vitamin D metabolism were associated with risk of recurrence or progression. In breast cancer, some SNPs in MMP8 were associated with reduced risk of relapse and better survival. There are also some intergenic regions that had SNPs that were associated with survival in prostate cancer, and some um, SNPs in MCP1 were associated with distant metastases and um, uh, in patients with uh, nasopharyngeal cancer. So he wanted to know what's the impact of SNPs in localized renal cancer. So to do that, he went to the tumor bank that we have at the Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center being collected as part of our SPORE grant with 691 um, patients who had uh, kidney cancer having provided uh, blood specimens. And he looked at those and eliminated patients where we didn't have any follow-up data and also eliminated some patients who were of non-European American ancestry where they might have uh, polymorphisms that were unrelated to the ones in the general population that made up the majority of patients in the bank. So that left 403 SNPs, or 403 uh, samples from patients with localized disease and uh, 203 from patients with distant disease at presentation. So he analyzed the local disease samples for about a couple hundred different SNPs that were chosen from proteins uh, that were either important in angiogenesis, kidney cancer biology, or immune surveillance. And this is a list of the various SNPs in important proteins that showed a significant uh, difference in terms of progression-free, excuse me, relapse-free survival. And you can see here there are three uh, SNPs, or four SNPs in CMET that are included, some in GLUT1 and VEGF pathways, and some in TNF. But by far the one that appeared to have the strongest association with outcome was one SNP in CMET, which had a p-value of 0. 0.000 one or slightly less. So um, this SNP, when you look at how patients did, seemed to um, portend a, if it was a GG variant, um, seemed to have a significantly better outcome than the uh, 10 to 15 percent of patients analyzed who had either the AA or AG variant in terms of survival. So this could have been somehow influenced by other known risk factors within the disease. So 
Tony, working with the statisticians, did a multivariate analysis looking at other potential prognostic factors, including age, ECOG performance status, clinical stage, Furman grade, and histology, and have found that this adjusted um, now, when adjusted for these various other risk factors, this SNP still was significantly associated with outcome with a hazard ratio of 1.82. So this is interesting, hypothesis generating, and needs to be prospectively validated. And Tony has written for a developmental research project funding to try to validate this particular finding as part of the adjuvant assure study. But it's possible that this actually may be real because of data that has emerged suggesting that CMAT may have an important role in promoting um, tumor progression, either through angiogenesis, invasion and motility, proliferation, or survival. And both sporadic clear cell and papillary kidney cancers have dysregulation of the MET pathway, and usually when it's dysregulated in the tumors, it's associated with poor outcome. And uh, VHL loss of function results uh, in increased HGF-driven invasiveness, the ligand for CMET. So moving forward, uh, we are now looking at whether SNPs can also influence the impact of treatment in patients with metastatic renal cancer. There's some data that suggests that um, SNPs uh, can ha be associated with outcomes in patients treated with VEGF receptor TKIs. These include sunitinib having a few SNPs that were associated with increased progression-free survival or overall survival in these um, particular genes, as well as two VEGF receptor 3 SNPs associated with time to progression clinical benefit, including one associated with overall survival. There are three SNPs in VEGF that were also associated with progression-free survival in univariate analysis, patients treated with exitinib. And for pazopinib, a SNP in IL-8, a SNP in HIF-1-alpha were associated with um, progression-free survival, and a SNP in the NR12 and VEGF a genes were associated with response rate. Trying to move forward. It's not moving. Okay. In addition, there's association of some SNPs with toxicity from VEGF receptor TKIs, including SNPs that have been identified associated with the hepatotoxicity from pazopinib and it's conceivable that um, patients who have those uh, variations in those genes are patients who should not be treated with pazopinib because of the seriousness of uh, that hepatotoxicity when it does occur with that agent. And certain SNPs have been associated with other adverse events, patients treated with sunitinib, particularly hypertension with SNPs in the VEGF pathway. Could you move forward for me, please? So we're moving forward, and some of this uh, will, uh, data will be presented at ASCO in looking at the other group of samples that we have from patients with metastatic disease who have been treated with either VEGF-targeted agents or mTOR inhibitors. And um, these involve somewhere around 260 samples with VEGF tar treat patients treated with VEGF targeted agents in 74 with mTOR inhibitors. And they're being controlled by various clinical factors that are in the database as well as clinical outcome. And eventually trying to identify SNPs that are associated with outcome as well as toxicity from these various treatments. And when these results actually will likely yield some SNPs associated with outcome, they will likely need to be validated from an independent data set. And so Tony has put this line here at the end that collaborators are welcome. Thank you very much.